Trainer for today, Mr. Woody. Say hi, Mr. Woody. Okay, he's a little bit shy. So I think Oda Nami is part of our police defense tactics training, PDT. PDT training also involves simulated scenarios where police officers apply proper techniques to deal with non-compliant subjects. When dealing with them, police officers need to assess the different options of force to use. Whenever possible, Police officers try to apply soft skills such as communication to engage with different subjects and to defuse tense situations. However, in some situations, officers may use verbal command and even escalate to unarmed tactics, batons or stun devices and even firearms. But police officers have to be flexible too. Ah. Yeah, I'm not talking about you. Lah. Real life scenarios are dynamic. These assessments only take place in a matter of seconds. This is when we exercise caution and choose to only use necessary force required in each scenario. Am I right, Woody? Our personal safety and the safety of those we deal with are our priority. But it is also our duty to maintain law and order. When I see online comments such as this, But then, to tell you the truth, no two situations are the same. And there is always more than one side to each story. As much as we have the skills and equipment, we do not abuse them. We may have the power, but we also have great responsibilities too. For today's Q&A segment, we'll be answering some questions that you guys asked from last week's episode, The Mata Who Still Wear Shorts. So for that, let's welcome Community Policing Unit Officer, Senior Staff Sergeant Nazri. Hello everyone. Okay, first one. This is a very popular question. Why is the bicycle the chosen form of transport? Right, so with bicycles, we are able to cover more areas such as the estates and parks. And at the same time, we are able to interact with the community at any point of time. However, bicycles are not the only form of transport or CPO officers. They also utilize other vehicles such as police cars and vans to get them from place to place during their patrols. Look at all these comments! Aww! Oh, thank thank you. you! One of the commenters was wondering how many CPO officers are there in the whole of Singapore? Well, I do not have the uh, figures, but every neighbourhood, there is a community policing unit. So, when you do see us around outside, please remember to say hi. Our next question for Nazri. In which year did community policing in shorts return? Our CPU uniform was introduced in May 2012 when community policing system was launched. Under COPS, the NPC was restructured to better optimise resource distribution among reactive, proactive and community policing, as well as leveraging technology to support policing. That's also the time when CPUs were first formed as a full-fledged unit. So happy to have you on board! We've come to the end of today's Q&A segment. Once again, if you have any questions regarding today's episode, leave your comments below and... Don't forget to like and share!